Good day. Welcome to the eighth lecture of metal forming. In the last lectures, we discussed the flat rolling process. As you know, in a flat rolling process, we uh, the initial work piece uh, has a rectangular cross section. After the rolling process, we get a same cross section. There is no change in the cross section of the work piece after flat rolling process. The only change is in the thickness and the length of the uh, material after rolling process. When we do a flat rolling process, the width of the work piece is reduced and length of the work piece increased. So that is a flat rolling process. And other than this flat rolling process, we have different types of cross sections or different shape products can be made using rolling process. So in this lecture, I am going to explain these miscellaneous rolling operations to produce different varieties of products or components made by this rolling process. And here in this, there are several rolling processes and mills have been developed to pr produce a specific family of products and shapes. So here in this lecture, I am going to explain uh, the shape rolling process, ring rolling process, thread and gear rolling process, rotary to piercing our management process and uh, two rolling uh, two rolling and a roll forging process so using this six type of process we can create different varieties of products uh, using rolling process so here we can see in this picture this is the product from the ring rolling operations using ring rolling process we can create this uh, type of uh, rings um, by rolling process and we can see different types of threaded fasteners and this type of threaded fasteners also can be made using rolling process and different structural components can be made using this uh, shape rolling process okay so all this process will uh, comes under this rolling process the first uh, miscellaneous rolling operation is shape rolling operation and in shape rolling operation and it is uh, similar in, um, uh, the function or the uh, the rolling procedure is same but here the output product will be a uh, structural shape. We can see uh, this type of structure shapes can be made using rolling process. See this, this type of edge section. The procedure for making this type of edge section is uh, described here. So this type of structural components or products can be made using rolling process. That is the importance of this shape rolling process. So we can create different types of channels, I beams, and uh, rail rod uh, rails and uh, are rolled through a set of specially designed rod so compared to flat rolling process in case of this uh, shape rolling process the main difference is the shape of the roller in case of shape rolling process we can see here the shape the gap in the gap area we can see the shape here this is not a flat sh flat shape here we can see a groove like structure so, according to the shape of the roller, we got a particular output shape of the uh, rolled product. So, here we use a specially designed roller according to the requirement of the final output product cross section. The process of producing various shape is called a shape rolling operation. So, the special type of cold rolling in which a flat slab, here we use flat slab, is progressively bent into complex shapes. Okay. So, it is not a single process. Uh, we cannot make a, a, a flat material into a particular shape with using a single rolling process it is a progressive rolling process we use multiple rollers for uh, converting the um, work piece into a required shape okay so this is a progressive bend progressively we bend into a complex shape and it when it passes through the series of driven rollers no appreciable change in the thickness of the metal during this process this is the important uh, characteristics of this uh, shape rolling process when we compare with the shape rolling and the flat rolling process in flat rolling process there is a uh, huge reduction in the thickness uh, for the final product compared to the workpiece but in this case in case of shape rolling process uh, com the reduction in thickness is comparatively low than that of flat rolling process here we what we do we change the shape of the workpiece into a required uh, final product so here the shape uh, change in thickness is comparatively low so here we can see if here the initial thickness is s0 the final product also will have the h0 shape but what is the actually what happened during this process we just change the shape of the workpiece okay uh, then the changing the 
thickness of the workpiece. It is suitable for molded sections such as irregular shaped channels and trims. So, different structural components can be made using the shape rolling process. Um, so, there are different advantages just for this process also. We will discuss about that. So, uh, here the variety of sections can be produced by uh, roll foaming or the shape rolling process using a series of foaming rollers. Here we are not using a single roller for uh, converting the workpiece into a final product. Here we use a series of foaming rollers. So, we do a uh, foaming operation progressively. Okay, we cannot change uh, um, from workpiece to final product in a single uh, rolling process. We have to use number of rollers and we change the shape progressively from workpiece uh, cross section to final product cross section. And in a continuous method to roll the metal sheet into a specific shape. So, there are different applications for this uh, shape rolling process. We can make different construction material like a channel, sections, etc. And uh, uh, partition beams used in the stress elements, ceiling panels, roofing panels, steel pipes can be made using this. Different automotive components can be made using this process. And the household appliances, metal furniture, door and uh, window frames other metal products also can be made we can see the pictures of the different products made using this shape rolling process okay next i will show a video uh, how the shape rolling uh, process is uh, performing shape has been innovating in the field of roll forming for over 40 this is, years this is a complex shape made among by many advanced rolling process shape has developed three distinct processes for inline sweeping first in one direction then in two and now in three directions with this technology so this type of very complex shape also can be made using rolling process multiple parts can be manufactured with only one set of tooling traditional techniques would require a separate tooling for each part using the highest strength steel sheet so the this is the setup used for uh, shape rolling process here we can see at the this is the uh, uncoiler where we use the uh, the raw material the sheet secure for shape rolling is uh, and coiled from this coiler. The whole forming process starts at the coil feeder where material enters the line. So, the coil from the rollers enter here. Some application. Here we do some punching. This is actually uh, a sheet metal operations. So according to the product requirement, we can do su such type of punching. So this is not the part of the shape rolling process. This is for the output product. Operations require a pre-piercing operation prior to being roll formed. Here we can see a series of rollers here, roller stands. So, here at the inlet, here we can see this is a flat uh, workpiece material and when this flat workpiece material passing through the gap between these rollers, progressively it is, its size is changed or sorry, shape is changed from this flat uh, shape to procure the output shape. The roll form tooling creates the cross section. A variety of inline joining processes can be used to permanently fuse to this, creates the cross section. When it passes through this uh, series of rollers, progressively its uh, shape is changing, and finally we got a structure component. See this? So output here we can see this is the shape after this uh, shape rolling process. So here we can see a uh, gap here so we have we need to join this area for that we use a uh, welding technique a variety of inline joining processes so can be used to technique. permanently fuse the edges 
so it is permanently fused that just using any of the welding technique this so, is followed by the inline so this this is the output product after uh, this shape rolling process so we progressively roll the flat workpiece into the required cross section here we can see the cross section is a rectangular cross section rectangular cross section okay so we convert this flat workpiece into this type of rectangular cross section structural component so this is a shape rolling process and <clears throat> we can change the here we can see this is a uh, um, straight member we can change the shape of this member using a uh, set of rollers here so this is not the part of the shape rolling process but uh, by using this type of rollers also we can change the shape uh, in length dash keep changing the shape further in one two so, different varieties of shapes can be made using this arrangement So, th this has different varieties of application uh, in automobile. Multi-dimensional sweeping has we many automotive applications. These include strengthening body structures without increasing mass, reduction in tooling costs, the ability to pass new strict regulations, and even improve styling and available cabin space. So, we can make varieties of cross section for the structural components using this shape rolling process for the automobile vehicle. Martensitic steel used in roll forming is 50% stronger. Other forming... So this is a cold rolling process. So by using a cold rolling process, we know by means of strain hardening and other uh, metallurgical uh, improvement, strength improvement, we can increase the strength of the material. So if you use a uh, martensitic steel, um, we can increase the strength by 50 percentage compared to other uh, process used for making these structure components. Processes are limited to 980 megapascals. Closed tubes have greater strength than open sections. Roll formed parts do not require multiple pieces or joining processes. With roll forming, all processes happen in line, reducing the need for manufacturing operations. So One set of tooling can yield operation. infinite variants, including both left and right hand parts. The shape sweep unit can even create multiple parts with the same cross section but different profiles. Multi dimensional sweeping allows you to put the strength where you really need it and pass new strict IIHS crash regulations. Shape roll formed advanced high strength steel parts up to 1700 megapascals can reduce package space in areas that require strength compared to conventional technologies. Both the styling and cabin space can be improved with smaller, stronger roll formed parts. Numerous automotive structural components. See these different rolled uh, shape forming components used in automobile uh, as a structure component. Here we can see different areas where we use these components. Components can be manufactured with roll forming. Multi-dimensional sweeping delivers high strength, low mass parts. These parts add strength, Reduction improve rigidity, cost. and intense durability to frame support and chassis while reducing production complexity. Shapes multi-dimensional sweeping is a family of a... Okay, so this is the uh, shape rolling process. You can see another video of the is another name is roll forming. See this again a raw material is uncoiled from the coiler, then through the conveyor. This is a <coughs> series of rollers used, and finally we got this type of shape. Okay, so the flat. See this, when it passed through this series of rollers, we can see the change in shape. See, initially it was a flat member. See the progressively its shape is changing when it is passing through the different rollers. And uh, we can see finally, this is a series of rollers. So we can see finally we got this type of shape.
so initially the work piece was very flat but finally after a pro progressively or a continuous rolling process we got a final shape so that is the shape rolling process next one is the ring rolling process the production of rings rings are different types of rings is used in different applications uh, we can use the rolling operations so in case of uh, ring rolling a small thick diameter for a ring is expanded into uh, larger one of thinner diameter so here our workpiece is a thick diameter ring maybe this will be the workpiece material used for uh, ring rolling and after ring rolling process we got a higher diameter and a lower thickness ring material okay so this will be the ring after ring rolling process so a small thick diameter for a ring is expanded into a larger one with a thinner diameter the ring to be expanded is placed between the two rollers one of which is driven and the other one is ideal so here we can see the ring rolling operation in ring rolling operation this is the ring or workpiece this one is the workpiece and this is the driven roller where we apply the or we transmit the power uh, for the rolling operations through this driven uh, roller and here we can see ideal roller this is the rounding roller and uh, this is the ideal roller this is no, uh, we are not supplying power to the ideal roller and here two edging rollers are used here uh, in the left side and the right side these edging rollers are used to reduce the thickness of the ring during the rolling operation this is the schematic illustration of the ring rolling operation and uh, thickness is here after this uh, rolling operation ring rolling operation the thickness is reduced and uh, um, at the same time the reduction in thickness is compensated with the increase in the diameter next we will see the video how this ring rolling is performed so this is the workpiece used for ring rolling operation a hole uh, at the center for uh, ring rolling so here we can see here we can see this one this member is the edge roller to in order to reduce the thickness of the uh, this ring we use the edge roller at the center this this one is the ideal roller here this is the driven roll this one is the driven roll and the combined action of these three rollers we can decrease the thickness and increase the diameter of the ring see this the diameter of the ring is increasing and the thickness is reducing diameter is progressively increasing in the diameter and the thickness is reducing so this is the edge rolling member uh, edge roller and this is the ideal roller and this one is a driven roller Progressively increasing, and the thickness is reduced to very large volume. This is a hot 
rolling process. Uh, we heat the material to very high temperature. So, the rolling process is completed. We got this type of ring after the rolling process. This is the output product after the rolling process. Okay, so this is the output product and this one is the input input workpiece okay so this is this workpiece is converting into a ring so this is the ring rolling process so the major uh, important role is used in this ring rolling is edge roller so this edge roller is actually used to reduce the thickness of the uh, workpiece and here we use an ideal roller and a uh, driven roller or main roller uh, in order to reduce the thickness uh, and increase the diameter so this is the ring rolling operation so the, in the ring thickness is reduced we we have seen this the thickness is reduced by bringing the roller closer as they the, by bringing the main roller and the driven roller uh, sorry ideal roller closer the reduction in thickness is compensated by the increase in the diameter since the volume remains constant there is no material removal during this process so since the volume is constant when we reduce the thickness this reduction in thickness is compensated with the increase in the diameter so this process can be carried out at a room temperature or at a elevated temperature here uh, in this video we, uh, we have seen this uh, hot rolling process depending on the size and the strength of the product so what is the advantage short production time compared to the machining operation we can create same uh, ring like members using machining operation but uh, in order to make a um, this type of products by machining it takes lots of time but in this ring rolling we have seen almost five minutes or uh, is taken or maximum five minutes is taken to produce a ring rolled member so the material is saved uh, in case of machining operation we have to remove the material from the workpiece to uh, convert into a ring but in case of this ring rolling we just uh, displace the material in the uh, from the thickness area to increase the diameter so here the materials is saved Close dimensional tolerance and uh, favorable grain flow in the direction in the product can be attained using this ring rolling process. And typical applications are large rings for the uh, rocket and the turbine gear, wheel rims, uh, ball bearings, and uh, roller bearing races can be made using these uh, ring rolling operations. Planges and uh, reinforced rings for the pipes and pressure vessels also can be made using this ring rolling operation. So this is the uh, figure of ring rolling operation here uh, we can see the rotation this is the anti-clockwise rotation of the workpiece here in the op two opposite direction uh, we have a rounding roller and an ideal roller and the main roller is rotating in this direction and this edging roller is also rotating this edging roller is basically used to uh, uh, avoid the variation of the edges if we are not using this edging roller um, when we reduce the thickness there may be a change in the edges uh, the profile in the edge area may change in order to avoid that we use this type of edging rollers okay so here we can make these uh, rings using two process the first process is uh, this machining process in, uh, in case of machining we take the uh, workpiece then we do the machining and pro produce this type of big hole inside the workpiece and then after that inspection and we got the final ring so this is the one process but here we studied this process that is the ring rolling process in case of ring rolling process first we make a ring blanks then we do uh, heating after heating we make a hole in the ring then we perform these ring rolling operations to produce this type of uh, rings so this process take almost uh, maximum 10 minutes to produce one ring but here this process may take uh, two or three hours depending upon the machine used for machining so next process uh, used uh, uh, the main important rolling process is thread rolling and gear rolling process so we can uh, create 
different thread that fastener is using this rolling process uh, you may study uh, the uh, making of the threaded fasteners uh, using machining using lathe we can create uh, threaded fasteners uh, we can create uh, threads on the workpiece using uh, machining operation but compared to machining operation in thread can be made on the workpiece or gear also can be made using rolling operation so thread rolling is a metal rolling process used extensively in manufacturing industries to produce screw bolt and other fasteners so nowadays we use uh, different fasteners for different applications and um, most of the fasteners are made using rolling operation uh, because the um, uh, making of these fasteners using machining operation is not a productive one so we use rolling operations to make this type of fasteners this is a cold forming process uh, that means um, we, we are not heating the material to higher temperature during this process we perform this operation in a cold state a common thread rolling process used in industries to manufacturing threaded parts involving forming the threaded threads in the metal of a blank by pressing and a rolling action between two die so here we use two die the, uh, the two die may be uh, reciprocating or rotating and when we uh, kept a workpiece in between this reciprocating or rotating die we got a uh, threaded threads uh, we form the threads on the blanks by pressing here we can see the video of the thread rolling here this is the uh, rotating die this one and this one is the rotating die in we kept the workpiece in between or blank in between these two rotating die <laughs> so here So we kept the blank this is the blank which is used for making threads on this and we kept the blank in the space between the two uh, rotating rollers and here we can see in the two die a threaded uh, structure we can see on the dies of uh, rotating dies so we provide lubrications to improve the surface finish so these two dies are rotating we can see actually the dies are actually the rollers so this is rotating and it is moving to in this direction these two this is moving in this direction along with the rotation so uh, we insert the workpiece there here we can see on the workpiece the threads are formed when we press these two uh, dies against the blank we can see we can press and form the threads on the workpiece see this So actually we move the workpiece in this direction, the dies are rotating and also it's move in this direction depend upon the pressing required. So we we'll finish the um, process and we can see, so this is the threads formed on the blank after thread rolling process. So that is the thread rolling process, this is a common thread rolling process used in industries to manufacturing threaded parts involves forming the threads into the metal of a blank by pressing and we, we already seen the uh, dies are pressing along with the rotation it is pressing the blank uh, and rolling action between the two dies the die surface holds the shape and the force of the action forms the thread in the blank material it has a very high production rate compared to the machining operation the main important advantage of this thread rolling process is that we can make threaded fasteners with a high production rate compared to machining operation a similar metal forming process can be developed for 
production of gear so similarly we can create gear also uh, in case of gear the gear blank is kept in between the two dies so this is a called forming process uh, actually in which threads are formed on the round parts by this is a passing the passing them between the reciprocating or rotating line so we already seen that it is essential that the material should have sufficient ductility this is very important because when we do a rolling operation if the material is a brittle material there is a chance for the crack development and uh, fracture of the threaded regions in the workpiece so in order to avoid that the material should be very ductile during the rolling process and uh, for that we can do different uh, heat treatment process to, to increase the ductility of the material like uh, annealing etc so lubrication is very important for uh, maintaining good surface finish and minimize the defects during the uh, thread rolling process so uh, we already seen that uh, we provide lubrication in the gap area for better surface finish and uh, minimize the defects during the rolling process production rate in the thread rollings are actually 30 pieces per second so this much um, based on the uh, actually it is based on the equipment used but we can attain a production rate up to 30 pieces per second using this thread rolling process so the, which is very uh, comparatively very higher than, than that of the machining process in, if you use a machining process for making a threaded fasteners we cannot make this uh, uh, this much of pieces per second uh, using machining process uh, if you uh, you know uh, using a lathe we take almost uh, maybe a 10 minutes etc for uh, making a one threaded fastener here we can see thread pieces thread 30 uh, threaded fasteners per second can be made using this uh, thread rolling process so it can be also carried out internally so we can make internal threads also using this thread rolling process with a fluidless forming tab uh, you may see the tab um, we can insert the tab with a threaded uh, die so uh, inside the um, blank and we can make uh, internal threads also by rolling process and uh, the thread rolling process produce higher strength threads without any loss of metal because of the cold working involved this is a very important uh, characteristics of the thread rolling process we, uh, we are not removing any material during the rolling process we just press the material uh, using the die so that there is no uh, material removal during this process so the uh, scrap involved in this production process can be reduced by this uh, thread rolling process compared to machining process and another important uh, aspect of the thread rolling process is that uh, by thread rolling process the strength of the threaded fasteners can be improved uh, into very large value compared to machining process uh, what is the reason for that this is a cold rolling process when we do cold rolling process there will be a strain hardening that we can Im increase the strength of the material by strain hardening uh, it's a metallurgical uh, thing uh, by means of strain hardening we can increase the strength of the material so the threaded fasteners uh, made using this thread rolling process has a very high strength than that of the uh, machined threads and another important factor is that the uh, compressive residual stress so when we do a uh, thread rolling process this region this threaded region actually subjected to compressive force we uh, apply the pressing for making the threads so this surface area of the threaded fasteners actually under compressive residual stress so this compressive residual stress will help to increase the fatigue life of the material so we can use this threaded fasteners where cyclic load is involved that is the advantage of another advantage of using thread rolling compared to the machine rolled member because of the volume consistency in plastic deformation a rolled thread requires a round stock of small diameter to produce the same material same major diameter as that of machined threads that is also an important advantage of the uh, thread rolling process we, we only require a blank with a smaller diameter compared to the requirement of blank for machining thread uh, development so also machining removes material by cutting through the grain flow lines of the material load threads have a grain flow pattern that improve the strength of the threads we can see the uh, grain flow pattern of the threaded and uh, machined uh, product here we can see this is the grain flow pattern so we take a small portion from this thread area in case of machined thread and uh, 
rolled thread here we can see this is the grain flow grain flow in the machined plant so actually here in this in this region the grains are actually cut uh, cut into uh, different okay so this type of grain flow pattern uh, may cause the stress concentration in the material okay and uh, so this is this is actually reduce the strength of the material leads to the failure of the material this type of cut grain flow but here we can see the rolled thread here the rolled threads are not cut actually the grains actually deform these grains actually deform like this there is no perfect cut for the grain flow so this type of deformation the grain flow uh, um, will improve the strength of the material so this grain flow pattern also increase the strength of the material that is an important characteristics of these threaded uh, rolled fasteners so dies are pressed against the surface of the cylinder blank i already explained as the blank uh, rolls against the infeeding die faces the material displaced to form the roots of the threads and the displaced material flows radially outward and, and the thread crosses are formed okay and the blank is fed between the two uh, grooves die placed to form the threads uh, we already seen that in the video and the the threads is formed by the axial flow of the material so uh, in the workpiece there is an axial flow of the material uh, during the thread formation the grain structure is actually not cut grain structure it is a actually deformed or distorted grain structure so this type of distorted grain structure will help to improve the strength of the material as compared to the cut type of grain structure in the machined threaded fasteners and uh, rolled uh, threads can be produced in a single uh, pass even in a, with a single pass we can make uh, this rolled thread uh, depend upon the speed and the resultant thread is a very much stronger because of the cold working yeah, we use the cold working and the strain hardening or work hardening will increase the strength of the threaded fasteners so this final output thread after cold rolling will have higher strength than, than that of the uh, machined threads that is the important advantage of the uh, thread rolling process and same process can be applied for gear rolling also in case of gear rolling in between the two die in between the two die we kept a gear blank okay we kept the gear blank and then, then we rotate the gear blank in between the two die and thereby we can create a pressing and, and these uh, dies actually press the uh, blank and uh, these dies produce a gear in this area okay and so the spar and the helical gear can be produced by this process similar to thread rolling and may be carried out on a solid cylindrical bank or a pre-cut blanks and helical gears also can be made by this direct extrusion process in case of direct extrusion process what we do is that here we uh, we have a small hole in this small hole area we have an opening which is similar to the which is similar to the profile of the here so which is this opening will have a uh, cross section which is similar to the profile of the gear and then we push the workpiece through this opening thereby we can make this helical gear structure this process is called extrusion we will study about that so this is a, another a metal forming process for making helical gears so uh, called rolling of the gears also will improve the strength and uh, productivity also will be higher for making of gear with the cold rolling process so this is about the rolling process so here we can see the two types of rolling here uh, this is the two dies this is my blank and this we can see the grooves here threaded grooves here similarly in the in this uh, stationary die also and when by the reciprocating movement of this moving die and uh, stationary die we can create an impression on the um, blank and uh, we can create the threaded parts see this by the reciprocating motion another type of uh, gear rolling is a rotating one so we already seen that in the uh, video in this case these two die stationary die and a moving die are rotating and uh, when we uh, kept a workpiece in between this gap between the two rotating dies we got a impression and a pressing on the workpiece and we can produce the threads on the workpiece so this is the thread rolling process and we already discussed the 
grain flow pattern this is a cut grain flow structure and this is the distorted or deformed grain structure this type of deformed grain structure on the thread rolling components will increase the strength of the component but in this uh, thread cut -up grain structure may cause different types of fracture on the uh, threaded fasteners so this is the blank we used for making the thread and uh, we kept in between the two reciprocating dies and uh, when when this two here we can see the threaded uh, lines on this actually this uh, lines actually pressing the blank and producing the threaded uh, profile on the workpiece so after this reciprocatory motion we got a finite output uh, threaded product so this is an example so this is very important the machined threads or rolled threads which one has an uh, good uh, properties and uh, which one is more productive that is very important uh, we, uh, I already explained uh, the comparison between the machined thread and the rolled thread so it should be uh, apparent that uh, advantages of metal forming are not just in the creation of useful geometry form but also in the creation of desired material property as well so by this metal forming process we can create a desired material property also so in the in case of thread rolling process uh, we already explained the strength can be increased by this thread rolling process compared to machining process so uh, by using this not only the creation of a particular geometric form but also we can create or impart different properties on the workpiece by using this forming process cold rolling process are useful for imparting strength and a favorable grain structure we already discussed the strength is increased by cold rolling uh, by means of this strain hardening or work hardening and a favorable grains orientation also can be developed according to the uh, direction of force applied we need um, a favorable grain structure which resists the or which increase the strength of the compound so that also possible with the metal forming so the since the metal rolling affects the grain orientation a part can be rolled in such a way that create a grain oriented in a direction such that they give directional strength to the part uh, useful so that uh, part specific application for example if we create a turbine blade this is a turbine blade okay and uh, for example during the working time this may be the direction of force the force is applied here so we can create a grain flow structure such that maybe after the rolling process this may be the grain flow structure maybe in this direction according to this grain flow structure in this direction this material has a very high strength but in this direction maybe in this direction in this direction the strength may be low okay according to this grain flow pattern in this direction the strength is low but in the vertical this applied force acting direction the strength may be very higher so we can adjust the grain flow pattern according to the requirement according to the force applied so thereby we can increase the strength in a particular direction that is called the anisotropic property imparting anisotropic property on the material so that is also a possible uh, aspect uh, regarding this called the rolling process an example of this can be the difference in grain structure between the threads of the machined balls and rolled threads we already discussed that the machined balls and rolled balls have a different grain structure one is a cut grain structure another one is a um, deformed grain structure the favorable grain orientation of the cold rolled ball will give its direction strength benefits to the its application so next process is uh, uh, rotary tube piercing or management process how can we create a uh, tube or pipe from the solid workpiece this is a solid workpiece how can i create this a tube or pipe using this from this solid workpiece so for that we use a series of process the first important process is the management process this is a one type of rolling process and this is the first process used for creation of the pipes or uh, uh, tubes uh, by rolling process after this we can use this um, uh, tube forming process uh, to decrease the uh, diameter and the thickness and increase the length of the pipe so this is the first process used for making the or converting the solid material or solid bank into uh, a um, hollow pipe so this is a continuous seamless pipes and tubings can be created by this process very important uh, when we create a pipe uh, if we use a sheet metal like a sheet metal to create a pipe uh, we can bend the sheet metal like this 
bend this sheet metal like this and we can join in this area okay by means of welding we can join this area and we can make this type of sorry <laughs> thereby we can make this type of pipes so here there will be a join in this area after bending there will be a join in this area okay so this is the main problem of the seamed pipes there will be a join in the along the longitudinal dimension when we do a bending operation so this is a uh, actually seamed pipe but if we use a management process this type of seams cannot see in this type of process so using management process we can make a seamless pipes so uh, if we make a pipe using this management process we cannot see such type of joining area along the longitudinal direction of the pipe so that is the important advantage of the management or rotary two piercing process so the basic principle uh, of the rotary two piercing process is that uh, when we air, take a round bar and which is subjected to a radial compressive force a uh, tensile stress will be developed at the center of the bar so that is the uh, basic principle of the uh, rotary two piercing process and for that we can take a round eraser and uh, just uh, take this round uh, eraser and uh, keep this eraser between these two roller and uh, apply a compressive force like this apply compressive force and uh, move um, in the um, apply compressive force along the vertical direction and uh, reciprocate like this so when we do this type of uh, compressive force when we apply this type of compressive force at the center of the roller we can see a cavity okay we can see a cavity at the center of the roller or eraser so that is the basic principle of the uh, this rotary tube basic how this crack or a cavity is created at the center the cavity or crack is created because of the tensile force actually when we take a So, when we take a round bar and we apply a compressive force in this direction and we move uh, to and fro, then at the center, tensile stress will be developed. Tensile stress will be developed at the center. Okay. And this tensile stress develops a crack in the center. In the center region, a crack will be developed because of this tensile stress. Okay. So, this crack can be or the size of the crack can be increased uh, progressively and this can be and based on that by increasing the size of the crack we can make, make a hollow cavity in the inside area of the workpiece and this principle is used in the rotary to piercing or management process. Okay. So, this is the principle take a round bar and apply the compressive force. When we apply a compressive force on the round bar, at the center of the round bar, a tensile force will be developed. Under the action of this tensile force, some cracks will be developed at the center. And these cracks, by means of mandrel or by means of other, um, other components, we can increase the size of the cracks at the center, and which leads to produce a hollow cavity in the center of the workpiece. So, this is the principle of rotary tube piercing. So, that is when a round bar is subjected to radial compressive force, tensile stress will be developed at the center of the bar. And when it is subject, subsequently subjected to cyclic compressive stress, a cavity begins to form at the center of the bar. And this phenomena can be demonstrated with a short piece of round eraser by rolling it back and forth on the hard work surface. So, by means of a reciprocating or uh, back and forth movement of the uh, eraser, you can see a crack at the center of the eraser. This is because of the development of tensile stress at the center of the eraser. So, this is the process. Here we can see uh, we apply a compressive force and we move back and forth on this eraser. Okay, we move the eraser back and forth. So, here we can see at the center a compressive or tensile stress is developed. Here we can see a tensile stress is developed and this tensile stress create a crack. Okay, so 
we can uh, use this is such type of mandrel this is called a mandrel by means of using this mandrel we can increase the size of the hole and we can make a cavity at the center and this leads to the creation of a hollow pipe okay so uh, here in this management process or rotary to piercing process for applying this compressive force and for the movement back and forth movement we use help of rollers so here we use rollers okay so by means of using rollers we apply the compressive force as well as uh, we apply the back and forth movement and thereby we can create a cavity at the center of the workpiece so the setup used for creating the cavity is shown here here we can see actually it is a <coughs> this one is the roller it's a skewed roller here we can see the uh, it is not a flat roller it's a skewed roller uh, when when this skewed roller is rotating what happened it is actually applying a, some compressive force in this direction at the same time it is uh, to one we can apply the to and fro motion on the workpiece so a cavity is formed how we increase the size of the cavity then we insert a mandrel through the cavity okay we insert a mandrel through the cavity and thereby we can increase the size of the cavity and we can convert the solid workpiece this was a solid we can convert the solid workpiece into a hollow pipe okay and this will be the cross section after minus man process we we can convert this region into a hollow region so uh, rotary tube piercing is carried out using an arrangement of rotating rollers and the axis of the rollers are skewed here we can see uh, this is a skewed roller okay this is a skewed roller and uh, in order to pull the round bar through the roll by a axial component of this rotary machine so because of the skewing of the roller there will be an axial component of force and this axial component of force is actually pulling the roll round bar through the roll gap and internal mandrel is used to assist the operation which is used to expand the hole so initially we create the cavity which is very small cavity uh, under the action of tensile force and this cavity can be increased the size of, can be increased by using an internal mandrel and a sizing the internal inside diameter of the tube so this internal mandrel determine or the size of the internal mandrel the outside diameter of the internal mandrel is e will be equal to the internal diameter of the pipe produced by rotary piercing process the mandrel may be held in place by a long rod and uh, it may be floated mandrel with the support uh, without support because of the several deformation that the bar undergoes the material must be high in quality and free from defects so this is a rotary tube piercing process here we use a solid workpiece and we uh, use this um, rolling process uh, this is the roller uh, mandrel this is the mandrel after the rolling process we got we convert this workpiece like this here we can see in inside it's a hollow region and this is the output product okay so we got a tubes or pipes we can make this type of long tubes or pipes using this management process next we will see a video Der Trick verdeutlicht das Verfahren. So this is the rolling process. And here this is the two rollers used. So skewed rollers are used and this one is the mandrel. This one is the mandrel and these are the two rollers used for this process. And this is the rotating and this one is the workpiece. So when these uh, two rotating rollers uh, applying a compressive force uh, at the tip in this region at the center of this uh, workpiece a small cavity is produced and we insert this mandrel through the cavity and this mandrel expand the hole and they produce a hollow pipe see this okay so again so solid workpiece is converted to hollow pipe using this management process
so a billet or workpiece is entering the uh, piercing mill or rotor management process mill makes a small angle with the, each the work rollers so there will be a small angle you have already seen that see this there will be a small angle between the workpiece it's not this is it's a skewed roller okay we can see a small angle here it's not completely touching okay and the billet when pushed between the roll, rollers get skewed and uh, rotated and the effect is an alternate skewing and bulging which produce a hole in the center of the billet this is by the application of the tensile force at the center of the billet and the hole is enlarged and made uniform diameter by a piercing uh, point held on the mandrel and since there is no joint here we can we cannot see any joint in this uh, final product so weld or seam tubes produced by management's will are smooth accurate and possess high tensile strength so this is there is um, there is no such seams or joint we can see in this uh, output product so that is the important advantage of this process we can make seamless pipes using this process next process is tube rolling process <coughs> this is actually uh, the second stage the first stage the rough hollow pipes are made using management process after producing a product from management process we got a tube at the, at the end product of the management process and that tube is used uh, for tube rolling process so this is a secondary process after management process so what we what here do in a tube rolling process it uh, diameter and the thickness of the pipes and tubing is reduced okay so uh, after management process we got a uh, tube or pipe and but it has a higher thickness and diameter okay so thickness and diameter of the tube or pipe can be reduced by using tube rolling process okay so this is the for example this one is the output product from the management process this one is the output product we can see the thickness is very high and the diameter also high so after the, this tube rolling process is a secondary process after this tube rolling process we got a pipe like this okay see this cross section high thickness and high diameter pipe is reduced to small thickness and a small diameter pipe but here we have to maintain the volume consistency there is no material removal so here what happened to the material in the higher diameter and high thickness region this material is utilized to increase the length of the final product okay so this is the tube rolling process after management process we got a material or product with a higher diameter and higher thickness we use that product for tube rolling after tube rolling we can convert this high thickness high diameter product into lower thickness and lower diameter product and a higher length also higher length also the length is increased but thickness and the diameter is reduced by this tube rolling process so some of these operations can be carried out either with the or without internal mandrel so there is no um, in some case we use mandrel in some case we are not using mandrel and basically we use this plincher miller plincher mill for this tube rolling process we commonly use plincher mill the tube and the internal mandrel undergoes reciprocating motion as the tube is advanced and rotated periodically so this is the plincher mill which is used for producing uh, high length lower diameter lower thickness uh, pipes you can see the plunge, uh, plinger mill. Pilgering is a metal forming process used in the manufacturing of pipe and tube. This Compared to mill. cold plinger drawing mill. and flow forming, pilgering is generally faster, more cost effective, and results in more improved material quality, making it an ideal process in the manufacturing of corrosion resistant alloys. Termed cold pilgering, this method is commonly performed at ambient temperatures to reduce the dimensions of a tube hollow to the desired finished product requirements. In this forming process, the tube is repeatedly compressed between... See this, 
this is the output the thickness and the diameter of the product which is coming out from the management process so after doing this tube rolling process we can see the, the size and diameter and the thickness of the output product is reduced okay so here we use two rollers these two rollers are rotating at the same time it is reciprocating so when 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 it uh, rotate and reciprocate what happen the thickness and the diameter of the product is reduced and the length is increasing and during this rotation the work piece actually progressively moving forward at the same time it is rotating by an angle okay it is periodically it is rotating by an angle between a stationary mandrel and two roller dies and uh, the mandrel inside area we uh, we kept a mandrel this is a tapered mandrel and uh, the one this end has a diameter uh, outside diameter of the mandrel is equal to the inside diameter of the final pipe and in this area the mandrel has a diameter equal to the uh, inside diameter of the workpiece and this diameter also uh, move uh, forward continuously during this process is a tapered cylindrical rod around which the tube is shaped and maintains the inner diameter of the hollow. Roll dies compress the outside of the tube to form the desired outer diameter. The saddle holds the top and bottom roll dies in place, forcing them over the outside of the tube. Saddle is the After each stroke, color. the tube is fed forward a small distance and rotated. See. This reduction in diameter and wall thickness results in a corresponding increase in length allowing for the production of long length tubing. Pilgering is generally faster than other manufacturing processes. In one pass, pilgering achieves up to 60% reduction versus up to 20% using the cold draw method. By making greater reductions in one pass, pilgering minimizes the number of required operations and lowers the amount of resulting scrap material. The pilger method also results in improved material quality. Relative to alternative manufacturing processes, pilgering achieves tighter tolerances and a better surface finish. Imparting cold work also refines the grain structure, increasing the strength of the material and causing less through wall hardness variation and anisotropy. So, uh, this is the uh, process. <clears throat> so, it uh, I will show another video. Wall that is over 122 foot long. The saddle holds the top so and bottom. This, this is the this one is the saddle, and uh, we kept the two rollers between uh, saddles, and uh, we rotate as well as reciprocate these two rollers. Dies and forces the two dies over the tube material. The mandrel is tapered and maintains the tube inside diameter, while the dies reduce the outside diameter. At a specific time in the cycling process, the incoming tube is fed and rotated into the dies and over the mandrel. Due to the large reduction wall. Okay, so the, uh, in case of this uh, tube manufacturing, we have four processes. The first process we already discussed, the management process. Uh, let me show the management process again. This is the first process, management process. In this management process, we already discussed that there are two skewed rollers and one mandrel. And we this is the hot material. <coughs> okay, so we pass the material through the rollers. A cavity is produced and the, this mandrel expands the cavity and we produce a hollow pipe. So first, after heating to specified high temperature, a solid steel bar is pierced by plunge or mandrel while rotating with a high speed is formed into tubular shape. Outer diameter is controlled properly by rollers and in increase a little after this process. So we got a tube after this management process. So this is the first process in tube making. Then after that we do different surface treatment and the surface treatments including pickling, pickling in a solution.
then we do water wash then phosphate coating again do water wash then metallic soap coating dry so these are the different surface treatments on the pipes in order to improve the surface quality of the output product then after that after this we we do the uh, plinger mill plinger mill we use plinger mill okay so in this plinger mill we have two rollers and uh, uh, we so initially uh, after management process this is the output product after management process rotary piercing and by this called uh, uh, plinger mill rolling process or tube rolling process we reduce the diameter and the thickness of the product so that is the uh, main objective of this process so for that we uh, pass the material through this rolling gear okay actually the rollers are reciprocating and uh, this workpiece workpiece actually moving forward at the same time it is rotating see this workpiece is moving forward progressively at the same time it is uh, rotating periodically during the process okay so it's move forward at the same time it is rotating here in this it is rotating by a 16 degree a rotating roughly formed tube is going through the one set of rollers which repeats a back and forth linear motion so these rollers are moving back and forth linear motion at a set same interval and it changes into cold rolled tubes in this mill so it's moving 60 degree so this is the, actually the one product from synergy synergy automobile parts produced using this process This is the mandrel, the blue color one is the mandrel that is also inserted um, through the inside, inside of the pipe. And after this, after uh, uh, this plinger mill operation, we decrease the diameter and the uh, thickness of the pipe. We got uh, a product, but the when we check the straightness of the final product, the final product will not be straight okay there will be some bending on the final product okay in order to uh, increase the straightening straightness of the final product and uh, remove all the bending of the final pipe we use this uh, straightening process so in the straightening process we use different numbers of levering rollers this is levering rollers and we pass the pipe through the levering rollers so uh, thereby we can increase the straightness of the final product Okay, the lever and rollers are rotating and we pass the final product through this lever and rollers and thereby we can minimize the bend. So this is the process. This will be show at the last. So uh, this is tube rolling. Uh, <coughs> Pilger mill is used for that, and uh, we use an internal mandrel and undergo a reciprocating motion as the tube is advanced and rotate periodically. So the tube is advancing at the same; it is rotating periodically during this process. We can create a tubings with the 365 mm diameter using this process. So this is the different varieties of process. Here we use a uh, mandrel uh, in this process. These two rollers are rotating, and this is the workpiece. Workpiece is moving forward direction at the same time it is rotating periodically. And this is another one with a floating mandrel. The mandrel is floating, and third one is the uh, pilger rolling over a mandrel and a pair of shaping rollers. Here we use a pair of shaping rollers, and uh, here the fourth one uh, the. Uh, the fourth one is this one uh, plinger rolling over a mandrel and a pair of shaping rollers uh, see without mandrel here we are using this uh, tube rolling without mandrel and here the output product will have a lower diameter and a, uh, thickness lower thickness but the length will increase
That is the two proling process. Next, we will see how this uh, final product is produced seamless 5 C's manufacturing in industry. So, this is the billet used for pipe manufacturing. First step is heating. After we heat 2200-300 degrees Celsius, after that the product uh, next process is minus 1 or rotary 2 piercing process. Through the conveyor, the hot material is. So, this is the piercing, rotary 2 piercing or management process. After management process, we got a, we convert the solid billet into a hollow pipe. So, this is the hollow pipe produced after management process. Then, uh, this elongating, uh, this is actually uh, one intermediate process that is called stretching process. Uh, in the stretching process, we can elongate. Or another uh, is a tube, uh, tube rolling process. Tube rolling process. Another name is tube rolling. And uh, here we elongate the workpiece. And here we can see the mandrel. This one is the mandrel. See this mandrel. So, workpiece is this one is the mandrel. So, we increase the length, uh, we reduce the but this is in the hot condition. Actually, we do tube rolling in a cold condition. So, we increase the length here. Then, descaling process. Uh, we have to do uh, descaling uh, as an intermediate process because when uh, this is when it during this process, the hot workpiece may react with the Hot workpiece may be react with the oxygen and other atmospheric uh, gases and they form scales. And during the cooling, uh, cold rolling process, this scale may be affect or form different defects on the workpiece. So we have to remove these scaling scales using the scaling process by spraying water under high uh, pressure. We can remove the scales. So we got the final. Uh, pipes then we do different heat treatment process cooling bed we cool to room temperature then this is the straightening process or leveling process to remove all the bending then we face the ends of the pipes So the last process is roll forging process. Um, using a pair of rollers with the grooves, we can make various shapes. That is the roll forging process. We can make this leaf strings, uh, table knives, etc. Using roll forging process. And roll forging is also used as a primary preliminary forming operations followed by other forging process. We can make crankshaft and other automotive components using roll forging process. Here this is a, a figure of roll forging process. Here we can see some grooves on the uh, rollers. Okay, so when when we pass workpiece through these grooves, a particular shape is produced on the final product. So see this this type of uh, this is actually leaf spring is made using this uh, shape roll forging process. So uh, here only we provide the this shape grooves in this area. This area is actually perfectly round. That means when this area come contact with the workpiece, there is no such type of shape change. But in this area, in this area, there will be such type of, we can see a pressing on the workpiece. So that is about uh, rod forging. These are the different miscellaneous rolling process to create different varieties of shape. And uh, using these uh, six miscellaneous rolling operations, we can create uh, different components in 
different applications. So uh, that is about this uh, miscellaneous operations. Thank you.